Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys a full review of the Samsung Series 9 15 inch Ultrabook. So, this is the digitally digested segment. I'm going to try to cover everything and really, you know, help you guys determine if this is the right Ultrabook for you because, after all, it does represent, in my opinion, at least at first glance, the best offering in the marketplace right now. When I saw it back at CES, I knew that it was special, and it is, frankly, because you're getting a 15 inch 1600 by 900 resolution display which you're looking at right now which by the way the flickering you're seeing you will not see that in person the display is fantastic uh, it does lose a little bit of its color saturation at extreme viewing angles but after all if you're using this head on which you will in most cases it's going to be fine and if a couple people sit next to you they won't have any issues either uh, but that is probably the only flaw that I could point out about this display but with that aside, let me go ahead, before I get to specs and what I really think of the entire Series 9 build here, just show you guys some video playback and audio performance to go with it. This is uh, over the YouTube channel, of course. Sample from the Sony NEX7. Now, Wi-Fi performance really good on this Ultrabook, and it does have the latest bells and whistles in just about every department. The multi-touch uh, scrolling is extraordinarily smooth uh, and really large, the touchpad, so very comfortable experience, something you won't find with any other Ultrabook, and I really do happen to like that quite a bit. Uh, the little bit of stuttering you're seeing here only happens in Chrome. Uh, you won't have that problem in Internet Explorer, but uh, it's a matter of really which browser you want to use. Of course, there are other plugins to uh, tinker with, but the point is, is that the screen does a really good job, and uh, it's just a pleasure to use. If this is going to be your everyday work machine, I think you're going to be uh, very, very happy. So let's talk about pricing. Again, this is the Series 9 15-inch model, uh, second generation, which does afford you a third generation Core i5. So battery life benefits, you know, Samsung claims 10 hours. In my use, you're going to get five to six at best, but that's still really good because if you match it up against any MacBook Pro running Windows 7, uh, you're not going to be able to get that much battery life out of any of them. Of course, if they're running, uh, you know, Apple's OS, another story entirely. But when we're talking Windows 7, uh, this is pretty much best-in-class battery life, especially for a 15-inch desktop replacement. The fact that it weighs three and a half pounds is just bonus round material. So uh, a little under 1400 bucks for the Core i5 configuration. If you want to go Core i7, of course, these are all low-voltage uh, low processors. You're looking at, you know, around 17, 1800, depending on where you pick it up. Uh, availability is wide and you know it's because this is a very popular product because after all it kind of does represent in my opinion the best you know ultrabook laptop uh, offering for a Windows based machine ever so uh, kudos to Samsung on a beautifully made designed and functioning uh, ultrabook here so uh, if anybody wondered if ultrabooks have a purpose in my opinion, the Series 9 second gen 15 inch model says it all. Uh, this is the NP900X4C for those of you who want specifics. Mineral Ash Black, as I mentioned before, Core i5 processor. You've got 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, which certainly makes for a fast computing experience here. 128 gig solid state hard drive. Would have liked to have seen a larger uh, drive, especially with, you know, knowing the fact that the solid state drives as of late are you know dropping in price rapidly so like why wouldn't we get something a little beefier especially at this price point but that's why they do have uh, other configurations uh, but performance overall really good you're, you're just not going to find anything to knock on this machine it can basically chew up and spit out anything you throw at it from video editing uh, you know post processing things like Photoshop you're not going to have a problem because that Core i5 really is enough for all mainstream tasks, even in the low voltage uh, you know, version, which is really just about battery life. As I mentioned before, really good battery life. Of course, not that 10 hours. I mean, maybe if you have brightness all the way down and don't do anything intensive, it'll eke out 
eight hours, I suppose, but who, I don't know who's using a machine like that. And of course, pre-installed, you get Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit, nothing crazy there. But again, this is all about the form factor, the battery life, and that's what you're paying for. And of course, that screen quality, which if it's not coming across here in the video, I can't stress enough. See it in person. It's really, really nice. Uh, and that was one of the reasons it impressed me at CES. It's not just the design, it's the functionality. A lot of times we get a great design and the functionality did, uh, does not follow suit. But in this machine, it does. So startup time is something that Samsung likes to brag about and for good reason because you know, I think it resumes in about three seconds. Startup time is like nine seconds. The machine just flies. And if you're accustomed to using something like a MacBook Air, uh, or even a MacBook for that matter, I think you're going to love this. Even though it's a Windows machine and you may not be accustomed to the OS anymore, maybe you do use it on a regular basis. It doesn't make any difference. Pick this up, try using it, put it on your lap, and it's just another generation of computing. Can't stress it enough. So you've been looking at a static image of the screen long enough. I've talked about specs, I've talked about pricing, I've talked about battery life. You guys heard some of the audio quality, obviously. Uh, in my opinion, the speakers are pretty good. Uh, I was thinking I'd be disappointed, but they were pretty strong. In terms of the ports it offers, I'll get to that when I go around the physical build, but let's go ahead and pan down to the keyboard, because I've told you guys you know what performance is like and it's good there's no question about it but the keyboard happens to be as I pan down here really really nice uh, really comfortable to type on very large unlike most ultra books out there where we don't see necessarily that great comfortable keyboard with enough space for the touchpad and as you can see the touchpad really spacious uh, really do like that and I give Samsung a lot of credit for realizing that, you know, that's primarily how you're going to be interacting with your machine unless you're going to use, you know, a mouse. So uh, you got to really focus on making the interfacing part of your PC experience as good as possible. So Samsung, good eye for detail there. Not that that's really a detail. It's a given, but good job. Backlighting is also nice, too. I'm going to take down the lights so you guys can see what that's like. As you can see, the power button's there in the upper right corner. Uh, a little bit of branding here. You've got a um, couple of LED notification lights here, and that's pretty much it. Just a simple, clean design. You know, the speakers are underneath the uh, laptop, so nothing visible up top. You know, none of the trying to incorporate speakers into the side of the Ultrabook or notebook or laptop here. Just a really clean design overall, and that's one of the great things. But let me go ahead and kill the lights so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And you should be able to pick up the backlighting here. And if you can't, I'll make sure that it's on. It may not be. Hold on one second. Go ahead and just uh, hit this because it looks like it's not. And there is the keyboard backlight is now all the way up. You should be seeing it now. It's extraordinarily subtle. And that's important because, you know, in times past, uh, to have backlight as a feature was always nice but it usually would blow out or it could really, you know, actually cross interfere with what you're looking at on the screen, maybe even, you know, uh, give people headaches, frankly, from just this extra <laughs> uh, source of light. So Samsung's gone with this subdued uh, new approach, and I happen to like it. I have to say in use, you can see it did light up the keyboard, despite the fact that it was extraordinarily subtle, but it's only illuminating the actual keys rather than just blowing light out around everything. So I do like the backlit keyboard. I think it works really well. I'm gonna pan back up to the display for a second here so you guys can see in uh, low lighting how it performs because I think there it might actually shine a little bit more. You'll see a little bit more of that pop in the colors because I have to say, you cannot forget that Samsung is one of the best display manufacturers in the world, and that's what is afforded in such an expensive build here. So let me go ahead and play another piece of video. Let's see what that sunrise video actually looks like uh, now that the lights are out. I'm just curious to see if it actually lets me go to it. For some reason, I'm, I'm not able here. Let's try to close that up. Go ahead and play that back in 1080p, which I didn't mention before that it is 1080p. Still getting that flicker effect. I mean, you, you can all be the, the judge, obviously, as to whether or not the saturation has changed with the lighting environment uh, changing accordingly. But enough of that. I'm going to bring the lights back up. I want to show you guys the keyboard again, just so you can see that even when the backlight is on, 
there's a reason I wasn't even able to tell that backlight was on and that's because unlike other uh, you know laptops ultrabooks like I was mentioning before where the backlight just blows out the entire keyboard so that you see everything but it's really bright and often too intense you can't even tell that this one's on unless you look at it at a certain angle when lighting is up which you'll see right now so lights are back on keyboard backlighting is still active but you can't see it at all um, I can see it if I look from the right angle that's part of the reason I thought it was on when I went to show you guys uh, what the backlit keyboard had to offer. So I do really like everything that Samsung has brought together here. Uh, it's not a fingerprint uh, magnet. Everything's matte, very professional. Uh, a business quality build and just overall package has the polish of something that you know you are going to want to take to the office and use on a regular basis without feeling like you've compromised in any way. Now. The 128 gig solid state is pretty small, I have to say that, but that's easily remedied with jump drives and external hard drives, so that really shouldn't be a problem. Also, no optical drive here, but if you're already looking at Ultrabooks, I don't have to explain to you, you're not going to find any optical drives on any Ultrabook. The idea has to been abandon that completely. You want to go with an optical drive, you should be looking at a completely different class of computer. Uh, as far as, you know, is it worth the price? I'm going to close this up here for a second because I want to show you guys uh, the rest of the build. But is it worth the price of entry, of admission? Uh, you know, it's tough to tell you because it really comes down to what you're expecting out of this. It's a really nice piece of equipment built really well. Uh, in my opinion, the nicest Windows 7 machine I've ever seen in my life. But uh, does it warrant its price point with a Core i5, even third gen uh, processor? I don't know. It's really a matter of what your personal intent and use is. I think if you're a MacBook user, then this is a really compelling product because it's less expensive than most options and nicer than most of your options, in my opinion, if you're an Apple user. But again, you're going to have to be working with Windows 7, so that may put you off altogether. If you're a Windows 7 user, this, in my mind, is a no-brainer even at its price point. Granted, this will come down in price. Now, I'm showing you the left side of the machine just so obviously you see that thin build. It's just, it's really impressive. But the port arrays, we've got, of course, the microphone right there next to that, the adapter for um, Ethernet out. Uh, they do not include a VGA adapter. I'm not sure why. I believe that was the Ethernet adapter. I haven't used that. I've only used the HDMI out, so I can't even comment on that. Don't really use VGA much anymore. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, the HDMI is right there next to it. Then you've got your headphone and microphone combo jack, one of the uh, USB ports, and then the power port, which is very much like you know the port we find on something like the Toshiba Excite 13, uh, ironically enough, even though that's not a uh, Ultrabook but clearly challenging something like an Ultrabook. Some ventilation on the back because after all, this does still need it. This will heat up, folks. If you're curious, it does get hot, but uh, no performance issues as a result. I'll say that much. Um, back to focusing here on the uh, port array that we've got. Two of our USB 3.0 ports right there, as well as there is your VGA out, as I was mentioning before, which uh, they really should have included an adapter for because uh, VGA, at least in the business world, still is uh, king, and I don't see why they would have excluded that and made it an additional accessory for such an expensive machine. And then, of course, you've got your SD card slot right there, which is a welcomed addition to this because uh, in previous gens, you know, that wasn't necessarily there. A lot of Ultrabooks, well, not a lot, I shouldn't say, but some don't have them, so certainly good. Stereo speakers, like I said, performance pretty solid, and just overall build is really good. No complaints. You can see some fingerprints there now, but no complaints about build quality, performance, top-notch, battery life, very good. So the only question really becomes, you know, is, is this exactly what you're looking for? And if you're looking for a business only machine that's not going to break your back, that has very good battery life, it's going to travel with you everywhere but not make you feel as if you've compromised, sold yourself you know, short of functionality, you're looking at probably the best option right now out there. Uh, of course, if you want more power, go with the Core i7 version, but I think for most users out there, the Core i5 will provide 
uh, more than enough power and speed, especially with that 8 gigs of RAM. I mean, it'll chew up just about everything you throw at it, as I said earlier. So I do really like the Samsung Series 9 from uh, the display to the design port array for functionality. They didn't really cut any corners here in my mind. Yes, the screen could be 1080p. In fact, I would assure you that the next generation of this Ultrabook will have a 1080p display. Hopefully, it'll even be an AMOLED, but you know, that's wishful thinking. But I really like the direction Samsung's going in. It's a big step for the Windows market and just hopefully a sign of great of the great things to come uh, not only from Samsung but from a whole host of manufacturers in terms of changing uh, what we expect we've come to expect from the window segment in terms of hardware manufacturing so uh, if you're looking for best in class you're looking at it here obviously as I mentioned the i7 offers you the more power a little under 2000 17 1800 for that model but a much beefier rig than what's offered here on the consumer uh, you know outfitted model that you'll find at most uh, big box retailers like Best Buy and uh, you know through Amazon etc etc if you guys have any questions or comments please feel free to post them and of course as usual please feel free to subscribe later